Hello and welcome to the second part of the session about the painting, the Night Watch by Dutch painter Rembrandt van Rijn. In today's session, we will speak about the painting's composition, about who is who on the painting, and about the secrets of the Night Watch painting. Position. Who is who? And secrets of the painting, from the very first brush stroke, Rembrandt imposes order on the mix of people represented in the Night Watch. He wanted this military painting to be dynamic, while avoiding any sense of clutter. The composition of the painting is very important. The way that Rembrandt places the various characters in space and highlights them adds balance to the painting in the most essential way, resulting in an action-packed image. Rembrandt once wrote in a letter that he strived for the most natural form of moments in his paintings. Rather than depict the militia in a neatly posed manner, his priority lay with adding depth to the painting. This explains why the guards were arranged in a staggered rows. with some characters shown in an elevated position. As if they have been put on a desk. Rembrandt adds depth to the painting in other ways as well. Stand 
think at the front, Captain Bannock Cock and Lieutenant William von Reitenberg are rendered with lots of detail. The deeper we move into the painting, however, the less detailed the characters become. Some are even completely lost in the shadows. and the colors also becoming more subdued. Combined these elements at just the right amount of depth that Rembrandt believed the painting needed. We may not even notice it, but Rembrandt subtly guides our gaze across the painting. On the right hand side we have three objects all positioned in the same direction. Lieutenants von Reitenberg Kane, Jan Cleason, Leidecker's musket, and Velik Schellingow's bike. And they create virtually symmetrical diagonals. We have the same thing happening on the left hand side of the painting. The captain's bannock cock cane, Jan van der Hedis musket, and the flag held by the standard bearer. These three objects create a kind of guide that will automatically lead the eye back to the key highlights in the painting. These are devices used by Rembrandt to manipulate our gaze, guiding it without fail to those places where he wants us to look. Narrowing our gaze by looking through the eyelashes, we will notice two distinct sources of light in the middle of the dark haze of the painting. Lieutenant von Reitenbach And the girl in the dress are bathed in light, as if they have spotlights on them. 
their highlighted volumes effectively separate the captain Manic Cock from the rest of the painting. Initially his dark costume makes him less noticeable. Yet he remains the painting's centerpiece. His hand catches the sunlight casting a shadow on Lieutenant's right amber body. The extended hand almost seems to come out of the painting as if attempting to literally draw the spectator into the night watch. Reverend's patrons may have frowned at first at the way that Rembrandt uses dark and light in the painting. It was common practice to distribute the light equally across all the characters in a group portrait. But Rembrandt never cared much for such traditions. The irregular pattern of light and dark, as well as the obvious dark light contrasts enhance the sense of drama, depth and movement. This technique is known as chiaroscuro and Raman has used it frequently to great effect. It was precisely this dramatic use of light and shadow that still makes him world famous painter even today. So, in composition, important is depth, light, When the Claveniers Gilde asked Rembrandt to paint a civil guard portrait, they might know that this artist would not follow traditional styles. Military group portraits were expected to show sitters in a stately posed manner, but Rembrandt was the rebel painter and he changed this tradition. 
in the night watch, he captures a dramatic event frozen in time. We can say moments before the civic militia marches out. Right behind the captain and the lieutenant, three characters demonstrate how to handle the clover, which is the firearm the guild takes its name from. On the left side of the painting, musketeer Jan van der Hede is loading his firearm by emptying the contents of a powder horn into the barrel. Jan van der Hide. Standing next to him, half hidden behind the captain, we see another symbolic character. We will talk more about this character later and about his helmet adorned with oak leaves. We can see that he aims his musket here and the red ribbon Here. Suspended from a spear in the right side of the painting. He is firing his weapon right next to the lieutenant on Rettenberg's head. After the shot is fired, the musket needs to be cleaned. Behind the lieutenant von Rettenberg, to the right, musketeer Jan Klesen Lydekers blows into the firearms lock to clean it. Jan Klassen Lydekers. Captain Franz Bannick Cock firmly plants his cane on the ground. And he is stepping forward.
pointing ahead, he opens his mouth like he is giving the order to Lieutenant von Reitenberg. Forward march. Time to company to move out. So they start moving. The standard barrier holds the flag high. The timbre starts beating the drum. The dog looks startled. A girl is running through the crowd. The soldiers grab their weapons and they are all ready to go. Seconds later, it would have been a completely different picture. I will speak now about some of the secrets that are on the painting. First, about a self portrait. Then about the girls. About the unknown man. about the signature and about the shield. In the night watch, nothing is what it seems. Rembrandt painted secret details and made choices that centuries later would still raise questions. The indistinct characters in the painting have given motive to a whole range of interpretations. In actual fact, however, Rembrandt would not limit himself to obvious truths. Instead, allowing characters to be born 
from his imagination. In some of his paintings, Rembrandt would smuggle a self-portrait. The Night Watch is one of those works in which we can catch a glimpse of the master painter. Standing behind the standard barrier, we see a man in a barrier. Although conclusive proof has never been offered, we should suspect that this must be a Rembrandt. Let us find him. Very interesting. It surely looks like Rembrandt. His eye and part of his nose. The girl in the beautifully decorated dress is certainly one of the most striking figures in the painting. Her eyes are automatically drawn to the girl, which is bathed in light. And yet this radiant girl is not alone. Behind her is another girl. We cannot see her face, but we do catch a glimpse of her blue dress and a part of her head with the ear that we can see. The girl at the front is very interesting. Some believed it was Rembrandt's deceased wife, Saskia, who died at a young age. Some said that she might actually be an angel because she is enveloped in a kind of hazy mist. One theory was that these two girls were the daughters of Jakob Nachtglas. And he was overseer of the Klovenirsdolen. We think now that the girl is, in fact, a Rembrandt's invention, symbolizing the Cloveniers' civic militia, because to her dress it is attached the items that symbolize the Cloveniers' guild a bag of gunpowder, and a 
that chicken with its claws raised to the sky. We know that the name Claveniers means claw guilt, and it can be association to the guilt. The prevailing opinion is that Rembrandt invented the girl as a symbolic mascot of the civic militia. Captain Franz Benick Koch himself also adds to the symbolism of the painting. He is wearing a cane made from rotten, a luxury accessory and a symbol of his dignity. And the captain's extended hand that cast a shadow on Lieutenant von Reitemer's body can also be a symbol because between the thumb and index finger we can see the Amsterdam coat of arms. Three silver St. Andrew's crosses and the golden lion concealed in the lieutenant's clothes. And Rembrandt uses this as a device to emphasize the fact that the militia protects the city. Unknown man. The anonymous man firing a musket behind Captain Benny Cog also has strong symbolic connotations. And more, his clothing style is definitely an echo of the past. Since ancient times, the oak leaves adorning his helmet have been associated with fame and victory. This suggests that rather than representing an individual person, he is a symbolic character symbolizing the civic guard as a whole. In the course of his artistic career, Rembrandt used several signatures. From 1633 onwards, he would sign his works with a Rembrandt F, followed by the year of their completion. The F is short for the Latin word facit, which means has made. With a bit of effort, we should also be able to find his signature in the night watch. Here on the left, next to the symbolic character firing a musket. 
here to the right of his leg. The signature Rembrandt F1642 is about 8 centimeters tall and 23 centimeters wide. That is a big signature, but in context of the massive scale of the painting, it isn't that huge. Rembrandt only used his first name to sign his works, which puts him right up there with Michelangelo, Titian and Raphael. Known by their first names only, they would all go down in history as the greatest painters of all time. The Night Watch's shooting company may come heavily armed, but fighting was going on at that time. In the meantime, the civic guard developed into a social club for wealthy citizens. And in the year 1715, decades after the completion of the Night Watch, and also many years after Rembrandt's death, an addition is made to the painting. At the top of the night watch, a shield is painted by a mysterious anonymous artist. It is dark, so it is not easy to see, but inside the shield are the names of the men who had paid money to be included in the painting. Because of this, we know who these people on the painting are. With this, we will conclude our session about the Night Watch painting. Thank you for your attention. Good night and sleep well. <laughs>